Chad, good morning. As you very well know, this continues to be a very frustrating and stressful situation for so many people living in this area. The impacts of this brush fire are endless from road closures to impacts on businesses, but most importantly, so many people still waiting to access their home. Kelly, Chad, we got an up close look at this plane just moments ago, and you can see that it's severely damaged. Witnesses say they saw it crash into the coast off North Captiva Island two days ago. The only way in and out of this uh, community here in Island Park is looking more like a river this morning uh, than a road. And right now, people are working on being evacuated from this area. First responders are about a mile away from where I'm standing, trying to get people out. You can see uh, cars uh, braving their way through all of this uh, flooding right here in some areas as much as three to four feet deep. Yeah, Clay, good morning. Me too. Uh, we talked to so many people who say that that's not the only place that they're finding these. One woman found one crawling in her bed another guy actually clings together his shoes every morning to make sure there aren't scorpions hiding inside breaking right now at four the man who murdered a teenager inside of a convenience store in Punta Gorda and then set a fire will spend the rest of his life in prison new at four President Trump is in Miami right now issuing new guidelines for Americans who plan to visit the communist nation of Cuba first of four a nightlight is being blamed for starting a raging inferno inside of this home if not for a smoke alarm the fire may have turned deadly NBC 2 News News today is bringing you live team coverage of everything you need to know to plan your day ahead. I am told that this is the only eyewitness that will be able to provide crucial information to the court about what happened that day. Things got uh, so heated last night that people were storming in, yelling at the association president, demanding that the name stay North Fort Myers. They claim they needed his permission to fix it. Only other men were inside of his home here, stealing belongings, and now detectives believe believe the same group of men have been traveling across the state of Florida. Now that they have the student population here, it's time for them to narrow down how they see the university taking shape during the next decade ahead. These sisters and their mother are in shock this afternoon about what happened right here where I'm walking. You can see the markings on the road where these girls were hit and then watching their sister Kimberly be flown to Lee Memorial Hospital in serious condition. Firefighters just told me it would be a good idea for us to stay right here where we are and not get any closer to the scrap metal uh, for our own health. And right now they're standing by just in case flames reignite again on the Upper East Coast Corridor. That's where we're seeing this winter weather advisory. So Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. Those are the cities going to be affected by this first rain, then sleet and then snow. And ultimately, the question comes down to this. Do call your county commissioners think this project is too intense for this neighborhood? Residents seem to think so, and they are banding together now to stop it in its tracks. Some Greyhound racing dogs in Florida testing positive for cocaine. A Jacksonville area trainer is now suspended after 12 dogs in his care tested positive for the drug. Not only did neighbors tell us that they had no idea that cameras were inside of these boxes, but they say the city lied to them about what they were. A woman calls 911 and ends up being shot and killed by the responding police officers. Now her family is demanding answers. The officer who pulled the trigger remains on admission administrative leave. Sarah Rosario takes us to Minneapolis where baffling questions remain. You can notice the damage as soon as you enter this park. Heavy winds causing the steel frame wall to knock over. But tonight, perhaps the most significant and most problematic damage is along the already fragile coastline near Clam Pass. The lights just came on inside of this store and this Dodge Charger here, that car that you see right behind the crime scene tape does appear to be part of this investigation. But what's left behind here, you can really I got a sense of just how bad this crash was. Look at the damage here. I'm standing right where this white Ford Explorer crashed through three fences. Uh, then right over here started rolling on its side uh, before finally crashing into this tree. At one point, his mother was so upset she had to get up and run out of the courtroom. She could not handle what the judge was saying as he was reading out what charges both of these men face, accused of a deadly drive-by shooting. Think of this as cracking the code, following them, learning their behavior to eventually develop a one-of-a-kind management plan to control rapid population growth. These snakes do pose a real threat to our native wildlife, and that is something that we are mandated to protect in Southwest Florida. So how do you do it? The best way to find a python? Use a python. As a snitch snake, they wear a wire. 
and then they will rat on their friends. Take a look at this. You're watching one of the only recorded examples of what happens after getting that process to work in Collier County. Slithering through an underground burrow, leading the Conservancy of Southwest Florida researchers right to a nesting point and breeding zone. We believe that containment is a realistic strategy. Attaching radio tracking devices to pythons isn't the only way they're reaching that goal. Scientists are on the ground and they're searching by air, at the same time carefully listening to the pinging sound those tracking devices transmit, successfully helping them locate and remove pythons and their eggs. While pythons can grow up to 18 feet long and weigh 200 pounds, this one is only 9 feet and 18 pounds, captured by a boater in Naples who felt something tapping his neck. Researchers say these sightings are only going to increase. That's why it's so important for the public to identify the difference between native and invasive species. One of the best ways to do that is downloading this app called I've Got One. And then they can deploy someone rapidly to go find this snake. It's the non-native snakes that have destroyed 90% of the small mammal population in Everglades National Park and recently have been found to eat full-size deer, even gators in our region that are so damaging. In Collier County, Lucas Scyther, NBC2. Heather, good morning. The only way in and out of this uh, community here in Island Park is looking more like a river this morning uh, than a road. And right now, people are working on being evacuated from this area. First responders are about a mile away from where I'm standing, trying to get people out. You can see uh, cars uh, braving their way through all of this uh, flooding right here in some areas as much as three to four feet deep. The Southwest Florida Urban Search and Rescue Task Force right now is bringing supplies to and from people who are stranded in their homes. Chaos overnight into this morning as hundreds deal with a surge of flooding sweeping this South Lee County community. Surveying a two mile stretch of flooding by air while first responders rush to those in need in brush trucks. I've never seen anything like this. Heavy rainfall and an overflowing canal through Island Park creating flooding more than waist deep, trapping mostly the elderly and those with special needs and no choice but to call for help. I'm handicapped so I couldn't get out and so I put off calling 911 as long as I could but if it rains in the morning, our house will be totally inundated. And it did after Robert McBride escaped, downpouring at times, stalling vehicles too. First glimpse of daylight and family members rush in to help their grandparents. We're just trying to get some sandbags in this kayak and take it to my grandparents' house. I had no idea that this was going on until so we got a call. Eight evacuated this morning with more underway as flooding only gets worse and frustrating longtime residents. So we had a lot of rain. But the county and that uh, 10 mile canal is the problem. They should have resolved this a long time ago. They never cleaned it out. They never did anything for 10 mile canal, all the construction. This is what's causing all this. And the problem with the canal is something that several residents have been telling NBC2 about this morning, saying it has been an ongoing problem and they've been trying to get Lee County to do something about the drainage problem. You can see here behind me a lot of uh, people uh, trying to bring in supplies uh, to people who have a lot of flooding in their home and uh, many people being evacuated again. Eight people we've learned within the last hour and growing live in Island Park. Lucas Eiler, NBC2. It's tough to look at some of these pictures, Heather, coming in of the destruction. NBC2's Lucas Seiler has the latest this morning on what's now opened and the latest on the fire. Good morning. Chad, good morning. As you very well know, this continues to be a very frustrating and stressful situation for so many people living in this area. The impacts of this brush fire are endless from road closures to impacts on businesses. But most importantly, so many people still waiting to access their homes behind me. Colleria Boulevard and Davis Boulevard is reopened this morning. It reopened at about 6.30 a.m. But beyond that, on Beck Boulevard, the situation is much different as many people still wait to get to their belongings. Early morning Wednesday, 5 a.m. There's tons of uh, ash flying through the air. And the smell of smoke is strong. A haze continuing to linger across the horizon as dawn approaches. We drove down there and we seen the fire. We've never seen nothing like that before. 
As the sun rises, its rays barely making it through the thick air, seeping from the massive brush fire in the distance. Money Woods barely slept a wink. Uh, you could smell the smoke in the rooms last night. They told us not to run our air conditions. 8 a.m. now, and the air quality only worsens, especially for this restaurant employee who told me she has asthma. She waited for a shipment that never came, unable to pass a roadblock this morning due to flames. Meanwhile, first responders across the street on Davis Boulevard remain vigilant, working to redirect traffic and keep residents calm as many anxiously wait to return home with no idea about what their houses or properties will look like. You're looking at the staging area right now for Collier County first responders. It has been growing throughout the morning. More firefighters, deputies coming and going. The Collier County Sheriff's Office mobile command unit is on scene there so they can communicate with their deputies and their firefighters who are out there battling the brush fire right now. And just because Collier Boulevard is reopened right now, firefighters do tell me if the smoke conditions worsen throughout the afternoon and later today, they may have to close it again. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Live in Collier County, Lucas Scyther, NBC2.